Hey convicts, it's about time I express my point of view about convict conditioning training method. The big six training system that you can find in the first volume, more precisely the first book. So in this video, I'll dissect the exercise variations presented, rep and set ranges and volume in general. I'll talk about the master steps and one of the hardest exercises possible in basic bodyweight training. Then about the strict programming, my general perspective on how it relates to strength and muscles. And lastly, about the coach himself, Paul Wade, the marketing behind uh, the book and his existence as a human being after all. But most importantly, why I consider this extremely relevant. This storyline and his secrecy have a huge impact over far too many. Don't forget, it's a bestseller after all. But first, let me start by saying that I was a true follower of the Big Six training system for months in my early beginnings in bodyweight training. It wasn't the only training system I followed, as I also jumped the rope and did athletics and some basic bodyweight exercises too. However, the book was okay to get some knowledge about basic calisthenics. And this was that came in front of me when I searched about calisthenics. It wasn't much until the fancy wording and storytelling hooked me in, as I think it was for you too. However, several years have passed since then and I achieved a lot of experience throughout my journey, so that I can refer to the book now and give an accurate review, both positive and negative. And here it is. Let's take the first family of exercises. We begin from there and then we just move to other topics. So the first big movement in the book is the push-ups and their variants. It begins with a few very light variants. I agree with Paul that they have a major benefit to those who suffered serious injuries and need to do recovery training or have atrophied muscles. Then it offers a few variations for the very beginners who lack in pushing strength. However, I got a problem with the form suggested in the book for inclined push-ups. I like keeping a straight alignment of my body and I tried this honey bee form and didn't find it very natural. That's the first thing I observed, but perhaps for you it is fine like that, I don't know. Then of course, the major problem that I have with the book is why the hell isn't Paul Wade in those pictures? When I create a video or write about an exercise, every time I refer to my own persona and I show how I do it. I don't hire anybody in my place to perform the exercises. That's at least strange, but I'll get to that later, so stay with me. Okay, let's move to another exercise. We have kneeling push-ups. I personally recommend this exercise only for those who can do half the range normal push-ups. I don't like the form and I don't believe one should invest too much time and effort with it. Uh, there are better exercises like working in inclination as the book suggests and shorter ranges and even negative push-ups with holes on top. Okay, so you just begin from the top, you'll stay for several seconds and you just come slowly on the, on the eccentric part. So kneeling push-ups worth a bit of attention but get past them quick and advance to something more challenging even if you just started bodyweight training. You don't need to beat the progression steps to move to a further exercise, that's kind of stupid in my opinion. Then I am all about normal diamond push-ups and the ones with the basketball, that's very nice exercise. However, this system with 2-3 working sets and progression steps, it's kind of bullshit. You should listen to your own instincts and know when it's time to progress further. And the time to progress further is when you decide, not, not especially when the book says. But let's talk about it a bit later, because now I want to get to the master step, which is the one arm push up, keeping the feet tight together. That's important. If you watch the picture from the book, you understand that that guy does the one arm uh, feet together push ups like I don't know straight alignment as as with with two hands but if you try this you know it's kind of impossible 
to go very clean throughout the range of motion without bending or curving uh, the body. If you tried one arm push up with your feet close uh, to each other, you have to bend as you go to the eccentric move. Otherwise, it's just impossible to execute. This is also called the prism push up. And the one with the legs spread out for balance and coordination reasons is called by the book the conventional one arm push up. I can do both and honestly don't quite understand all the fuss around the military one arm push up. I actually enjoy doing the conventional one arm push up better than doing this complicated military prison variant or whatever, even if it feels like I need to generate more force and strength for every rep. That's true, it's harder. Then, meeting the elite standard for 100 reps for each arm, I think it's impossible, honestly. Very few people out there can do 100 regular push ups with both hands, correct and in full range of motion, because this is important. So that's an unreal goal and extreme challenge at the same time. Kind of contradictory in terms of volume too. The thing is that the coach doesn't recommend going over three sets of 20 reps. But now, all of a sudden, who does 100 military one-arm push-ups is an elite athlete. Too bad this elite standard doesn't exist. I didn't see nobody doing it. But why recommending something you haven't proved, <laughs> but guide others to try it? That's just something I cannot respond to myself. I can only imagine the training structure, the grind and the volume needed to get over 30 push-ups with an arm. And if I am honest, you can't start with the other push-up variants and finish with this one, the master step, because you remain out of strength once you reach the master step. And then you have to boost dozens of reps for each arm in particular. So I think it requires a little bit of different preparation from that point on once you reach the master step. Finally, the second big movement, squats and their variants. It begins with some exercises that Unless you come from an injury, I don't see the point of them, honestly. But there is one that can actually help many improve their form when squatting. The exercise is called supported squats or assisted regular squats, as I like to refer to them. This one is remarkably good if you are rigid and lack in mobility to perform squats correctly and deeply, like even keeping the whole sole on the, on the ground when squatting. You can help yourself a little bit with your hands. Then all other tougher exercises are more than fine. I can suggest that you can also do one leg squats on an elevated box. If you have some pain and problems in the lower back, you might find pistol squats dangerous. I had this issue, so I, I know what I'm talking about. So this is a very good alternative. Just find a spot where you can stay elevated so the other leg, leg just have space to fall uh, naturally. Once you reach the master step, the elite standard is something doable in my opinion, but it needs consistency and a lot of patience to work those reps. Then I also like the proposed variants like hill sprints, stair sprints, which is kind of similar, fireman sprints, very nice exercise here if you have a training partner, box jumps or you can do one leg one leg box jumps and even those car pushings you know, here i think you need a, a driver to uh, push the brake <laughs> um, but really really awesome exercises for the legs and i dare to say for the whole body because when you when you work in elevation with a steep hill or something when you push the car right you also engage the upper body and the midsection. The nothing uh, negative about the pull-ups and leg raises. I like the general proposed exercises and their variants too. It's just that I think there are far too many uh, variants for leg raises there. You can work with two, three of the hardest, perhaps even knee raises. Other than that, bend a little the leg, then move it straight. I don't know what to say, 
you should include dedicated stretching exercises for your spine and for your legs for the whole body so you can I don't know get this ability to do straight leg raises on a pull-up bar now regarding bridges I just think there are too many exercise variations again and I don't see the point in reaching an elite standard here there is plenty of exercises that improve the whole back and spinal muscles from the bottom to the top that you already do like heel sprints, stair running, leg raises and many others so you don't need so many variations here and to reach this elite standards that's what I'm saying not that you should avoid bridging at every time not to mention that I saw people and even girls little girls that can't do the master step so <laughs> I don't get it and they didn't strike me as very strong believe me but rather agile and flexible the last one and I have to discuss a little in detail here is the handstand push-up against the wall of course I like the majority of the exercises in this chapter the family of exercises I find them very useful for shoulder development especially and coordination if walking in your hands and performing free handstand push-ups is the aim but and it's a big but I don't believe that one-arm handstand push-ups are achievable ever and by anyone regardless of the training the mechanics are not prone to such an achievement the form looks very bad and I don't see any reason why you should even think of it plus I'm still waiting for Paul to show us the mortals how it's done all I saw on the internet the YouTube videos are sincerely complete crap they rather pull with the <laughs> toes on the wall inch by inch and compensate with the pushing strength or just I don't know twist entirely the body so that they can somehow push but it like looks very 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 strange to me I don't understand it but other than that there are some variations there where you place a hand on the ball and the other well where there are two hands it's like really good exercise you can train with it so what I suggest here just get some exercise variations that you enjoy there and work with them now let's dive into the strict programming that the big six system provides I get it going beyond 10 20 reps for these exercises may be pointless from a strength perspective I can relate with that I don't agree but here it is the more reps you do the easier an exercise becomes later and thus you get more adapted to regressive and progressive variants that's why I can do one arm pull-ups and many other very hard exercises not because I kept the low set and rep range neither because I followed progressive training low volume and strict programming but because I work with basics and for very much until they got easier. The post suggests a lot of other variants too, like dips and many others, so it's pointless to believe you won't build total work volume if you go even by the book's recommendations. Not to mention, they have other books too they push to us to buy, so the volume and exercises keep adding upon. Then I'm not too fond of the structure either, I actually think it's even a better idea to go in a pyramid and begin with the hardest variations after a good warm-up instead of the other way around as the book suggests. I can't train one arm exercises after exhausting my muscles working with both hands. So why not mixing around? I don't understand. Plus I don't think you train only one big family in a single workout. You may want to work two or three big families in a single workout and your muscles will get tired so you want to focus on those very light exercises considering you want to get very strong or you want to mix them up a little and work with those hard variations too because you will still have energy left to work with the lighter ones in the end and this makes a lot more sense to me then the other issue is the same kind of classic sets and reps training method. It's a classic bodybuilding kind of method. 
While this works in general, I don't say for strength too, especially for muscles, but the body adapts eventually, so you need a new stimulus here. That's why you can change a bit and work with other methods too. And by other methods, I mean keep the big six movements. I'm not talking about getting in other exercises entirely, but do different training methods like, I don't know, pyramid style and ladder st style. For instance, uh, you can do five handstand push-ups, then four handstand push-ups, then three handstand push-ups and so on. You finish the rep range that you that you establish and then you move to another variations. You can change from handstand push-up family to another family like push-ups and working with one arm. That's pretty much what I suggest here. Oh, and not to forget the circuits. You can get like three, four exercises that somehow cover the whole uh, body and just move from one to another until you're fully exhausted. That's also a great idea to further stimulate the body and the nervous system to get stronger. Believe me that you won't get less strong if you change the training method. Then as I said, this type of training and structure will work up until a point. So far, I didn't find too many with an impressive physique, neither strength. The reason I think is very simple, they attach to one way of training forever, without mixing and adding other types of training and exercises. Like, I stick with it, let's forget about the others. So this structure isn't prone to building muscles, as it says, unless you reach the master steps or close to that and start to work on the elite standards with a higher volume. That huge volume to reach the elite standards, I believe it can develop some serious muscles given you have good nutrition also. So what I suggest is stop focusing so much on the first three, four progressions for each movement almost to meet the progression steps and start working with those that have a bigger impact instead. Then build sets, build reps beyond what it's given by the book, beyond the two uh, sets, progression steps, even three uh, sets, progression steps per exercise. If real muscles and strength is your purpose. Lastly, comes the question of whether Coach Paul Wade is real. And in my opinion, this book is a bestseller due to the storyline, storytelling, the bad guy who got incarcerated and did drugs and turned out to be a training machine years after. The one who wrote the book is very good at finding the proper words, so kudos to him. Thus, the coach hired, in my opinion, someone to sell the story than the persons to appear in the book. So somehow we are forced to believe by the book and the marketing behind that Paul Wade actually did those elite standards and exercises. But nothing gets proved by him. So my opinion, I wish I never had to prove myself. All these workout videos and pictures and stuff that I do and create and many still question me. But they follow a ghost and believe it's I don't know, the right way to train. That's at least very strange for me. So it's not a question of whether he is real or not, but I like questioning things. I don't think, and I wouldn't follow some, someone who doesn't prove himself, in fitness at least. More so if you saw the other books, then you see that Cavadlo brothers are present there and all they said is that they communicated through emails, so they don't know him personally. So how the heck do you appear in his books, but you don't know of his, of his existence? So that makes me believe that he is not that real. Yes, the book was written uh, by someone who knows calisthenics, knows the stuff. He's probably very good with it. I don't know who's behind, pro probably Dragon Doors, the, who published the, the book on Amazon. But other than that, it's more of a lie. If Paul is real, then come out, prove the stuff that you said. Otherwise, it's just nothing, thin air. So this is it. I hope that my ideas will help you 
train with the big six movements a little bit better and meet your progression faster because this is what it's all about and i don't know i catch you in the next vlog of mine salute